Okay. Shout out to Young Caps when the building says, hey, Anton, I have to watch on replay. Is it smarter to get a second job uh, or work for DoorDash? Thanks for all that you do. Both. Both. Why are you limiting yourself? Every available moment that you have, if you're just sitting around playing video games. Yo, let me let me break it down like this. The way that I break down my time is, and here, I'll just, I'll just, let me just answer this in its entirety. That's a really good question before we get into the show. The way that I go about doing it is not whether or not I got one or two jobs or anything like that, right? The way that I break down how it is that I go and chase bags is I break it down based off of the amount of time that I have in a day. So, for example, uh, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Here in Miami, I have not really left uh, out of the condo. And I mean, that's one of the reasons why I try to get places that's really, really nice. Um, because if I'm not out running around and taking care of business, I had to shoot stuff with Revolt. I'm taking care of business with regard to my regular day-to-day -day corporate job. Uh, it's a huge bag on that. We got the content creation. We got the web development business. Um, I'm going back and forth and having, I literally had a two hour meeting yesterday with all of the different contractors that we got for building a house. And so the way that I manage my calendar and my schedule is based off of what my capacity is, right? And so Friday, after I get done doing the Millionaire Morning Show, after I get done going over and taking care of some other business that I got to do, and then I'm going to shoot over to Valuetainment because I got to meet with them, then I'm going to go out and party on a Friday night. And then possibly catch a flight back home tomorrow afternoon, right? So we'll be able to mix it up just really on a Friday night because we out networking, we out taking care of business, and um, we making as much money as possible because we don't leave any bags on the table, right? So when people ask me a question of, hey, should I get a second job or should I door dash or should I, start, should I start my own business? Both. You should do all of it. And so the DoorDash is an opportunity when you're not working that job or if you're not on a schedule or if you got some extra capacity or anything like that, right? And so the, the point is all money in. And the way that you start to build out how it is that you go about looking, out, looking at things is, shout out to Rich, I'm going to be reading Super Chat shortly. The way that you go about doing it is that one of the reasons why I tell people it's very, very important for them to have a personal calendar. And most people only have... They work calendar if they got like a corporate job. So they might, might have Microsoft Outlook or something like that, right? And then they just go by that calendar and that's the only way they go about doing things. And the reason why the, the company give you that calendar is to help you stay organized and on task so they can extract the most from you when you're at that particular job. So they know what your capacity is. They know when you got meetings. Then you can start to space out when you got to fit work into that. And if you don't, then you got to take it home. But why would you do that and then you don't actually do it for your own personal life? If it worked for you at the job in order for them to extract as much resource or to get the most out of you with regard to how it is that they can maximize the time that you're at the job, right? Because they pay you a salary, they're exchanging your time for resources, and then they're keeping you managed. And it's very, very important for them to do so. And they pay for that. They pay for that Microsoft Outlook calendar. They have a license for you and they're managing your time correctly. Then why wouldn't you do it for yourself? Why do you not have a master calendar? And I talk about this and I actually show y'all in a video inside of the Patreon of how it is that I manage my time, right? My, my calendar is my Bible. And so I know that in this 24 hours out of the day, I got to get at least six hours of sleep. I prefer to get seven, but I got to get at least six hours of sleep, right? And so the other 18 hours, it's an opportunity, opportunity for me to get the most out of the day. Right. So let's just say, for example, you work your regular eight hours on your regular job. Right. And then you work an additional four hours on the other job. And let's say you got a half hour to an hour in between there for travel time. Then that means that you've only worked twelve and a half hours. And I know people are like, oh, my God, 12 hours. We're we're spoiled Americans. So now you got the capacity of three to four additional hours in there. And what you going to do with it? That's when you start to work on your business. That's when you make that extra money so that you can throw it on your credit cards or you can start to invest in the things that make the most sense for you, right? That's your capacity to really get ahead of everybody else. When everybody else is asleep, when everybody else is playing video games, when they just over there shooting the shit and shooting the breeze, when I be on these panels, right? When I jump on Fight Club in the morning, I be working. I'm talking and working and multitasking at the same time. When I first started Fight Club, right, on the Anton Daniels channel, 
I started it because I wanted people to stay in the house and be more productive and not find themselves in trouble outside late at night. But the whole concept before it became Fight Club was, hey, work with me while I work late at night. Because if I'm going to be up, I might as well be extracting the most out of it. I'm not up just looking at the TV. I don't even watch TV. I'm not up just milling around and looking at, man, I'll be answering emails. I'll be having stuff scheduled, stuff be dropping while we own Fight Club and taking care of business and all that other type of stuff. So my point is, is that if you're going to do it, then get the maximum from it. If I'm, And that's everything. If I'm going to have sex, I'm going to fuck you. I know that this is the Millionaire Morning Show. We early in the morning, and y'all don't want to talk about that. I'm watching that, Kojak. I'm about to go to that, too. If I'm going to have sex, either I'm going to fuck you or I'm going to make love to you. Ain't no in-between, right? If we going to do it, we going all of the way. If we going to do it, I'm getting in there. I want the most out of you. I want to extract everything from you. I want your fucking soul. If I'm going to work at this job, I'm going to get the most that I can out of it, right? I'm getting the 401k. I'm getting the match. I'm using all of the dental benefits. I'm getting everything that I possibly can out of that thing. If I'm going to do this content creation thing, I'm doing everything that I can to extract the most from it. I'm not just on some laissez-faire type of, type of time. If I'm going to a party, I'm going to be dancing my face off and I'm going to have a great time, right? Everything that I do, I'm going to be the most immersed in it. If I'm going to have some time to be able to get the extra bag, I'm getting all of the bags. The only thing that I ever wanted when I was younger, I never cared about women. I never cared about parties. I never cared about stunting. I didn't care about any of that shit. When I was young, ever since I can remember, since I was 11, 12 years old, the only thing that I ever wanted was to be rich. I'm being absolutely honest with you. My dream as a child, my dream as a child was to be rich. I had a Lamborghini Countach and a Diablo on my wall. I used to dream of getting rich. That's all I could think about is, yo, okay, so I was planning my life out before we ever had Google calendars and all of that other type of stuff. I didn't care about nothing that these motherfuckers was doing. The minute that I was able to work, I was hustling. I was grinding. I was pushing. I was running that check up. And then I was like, all right, so now this is what life is supposed to be like. I never wanted to fucking be regular. I never wanted to just hang out with you niggas. I didn't just want to be chilling. When y'all see me pull up to the Patreon meetup, from the time that I walk in the door to the time that I leave out, I'm lit. I'm on it. I'm shaking hands. I'm partying. I want to have conversations with y'all. We be having a good time. We be throwing back drinks. I be standing on the bar giving speeches. If any of y'all ever been to a Patreon meetup, you know what it is. We get it in. I am on 10 100% of the time. When you see me on this live stream and I'm talking to y'all and I'm going back and forth, you know that I don't waste one minute, every single minute. I'll be up in a DJ booth having a good time, right? I want to meet you. I want to kick it with you. I want to hug y'all. I want to laugh. I want to cry. I want to figure out what it is that's going on. I want to know about your life. We be having a good time. Some of my friends may pull up. Charleston White pulled up to the last Dallas meetup. I want the most out of this shit. And so I break it down. It's a mathematical equation, right? The amount of money that I make per year divided by 8,760. It's that easy. You got a calculator on your phone. Use that motherfucker. 8,760 is the amount of hours in a year. You take how much you make per year. If you make $100,000 per year, then you divide it by 8,760. Your time is only worth $11 and like 60 cent an hour or some crap like that. $11 and 60 cent an hour. That means when you sleep in, when you awake, whatever it is that you do, how much you make per year divided by 8,760, that's the value that you add into this lifetime. And so if you're spending it on a hoe, it's going to cost you $11.60 an hour. If you're hanging out with people that's for the streets, they're costing you $11.60 an hour. And so the thing that you got to figure out is, is it worth it for me to be sitting around with these people that ain't talking about shit? Or should I be trying to figure out how I can increase the value of my time? Now, conversely, and I broke this equation down for people. Now, how do Anton keep himself in a situation where he don't fall into it with these side chicks or these hoes for the streets and all of that, right? Because it's not entirely just based off of the fact that I love my wife. It's not entirely just based off of the fact that I have big discipline, right? It's also entirely based off of the idea that I don't think that these hoes is worth my time, right? When we do these coaching calls, 
I don't charge y'all what it is that I charge my corporate clients because I'm only charging y'all to add value into your life. I want to make myself as easily accessible as to most people as possible. So I only charge you based off of how much my time is worth, not much how much I charge a corporate client, right? And so when I start to look at these hoes for the streets, I'm like, yo, if I hang out with this chick, right? And let's say I'm with her for three hours. Let's say I'm with her for three hours. That hoe is going to probably cost me over $1,000 of my time. I'll never be able to get that time back. And her head probably ain't even going to be that good. So then for me, I'm like, why would I spend my time on this hoe? Because she ain't worth it. And why wouldn't I spend my time increasing the value of my time? You know what I'm saying? I'm never going to let anybody devalue what it is that I bring and how it is that I'm moving because she ain't worth it. She ain't got enough... Everybody, he got it for free, but it's supposed to cost me a thousand dollars of my time to be able to, to be able to spend. So if his time, because he don't even make a hundred grand a year and I make well over a million dollars a year, right? If his time is worth $50,000, that means that it costs him the equivalent of about $5 and 80 cents an hour to spend with that hoe. So it cost him about $16 to get the pussy and it's going to cost me a band to get the pussy of my time because my time is way more valuable than his, right? So why should it cost me a band and it cost him $16? I'm telling you, listen, my brain works crazy. My brain, my brain breaks everything back down to a mathematical equation. And if it took him three hours to hit it and it took me three hours to hit it and his time is only worth $5.80 an hour and my time is worth $333 an hour, why would I ever spend more than he spent to get the same box after he didn't already had it? She ain't worth it to me. She just ain't worth it to me. Why would it? Why should it cost me more to get box that's more devalued after he didn't already got it? Everything, only thing I ever wanted to be when I was little was rich. Everything else came, came it had to fall up under that. When I was deciding whether or not I was going to have a kid, I was thinking to myself, now how much is it going to cost me to have a child? And how much is it going to cost me to raise it? It was a mathematical equation that came along with having a child. It was a mathematical equation that came along with having that child. Everything come back to the money. When we say this Millionaire Morning Show shit, everything come back to the money. How much is it going to cost me to have this child? How much of my time is this chick going to spend? Even if she signed a non-disclosure agreement, even if she signed a consent agreement, how much is it going to cost me to really roll out with that chick? Fuck her. Fuck her. Lead that hoe for the streets and let her go back to where she cameth from. I know you asked me a simple question based off of the super chat, but uh, I just had to break it down based off of how I see it. And so I'd rather have my Rolex than have you on my lap. Fuck you. I'd rather be telling time on this solid gold Rolex that's heavy as fuck than be sitting here having a conversation with you talking about what you ain't going to do. If you don't get your mouthy black ass on out of my face, because I ain't got time for that shit. To the streeteth is where you cameth, and to the streeteth back you go.